Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, as you know, uh, the strike has begun. We're still at the table negotiating, and hopefully we'll make some progress today. I'm convinced we can. Alors, je voudrais le dire en français aussi. Uh, je vais faire un point de presse uh, plus tard après le caucus, mais on sait que présentement, il y a une grève. Et on va continuer à travailler à la table pour trouver une entente. Je suis convaincu qu'il y a une entente. Sur la, demande, la demande de travailler à la maison, pourquoi c'est un, un point d'achoppement? Yeah, so look, uh, first of all, we're at the negotiating table with the union right now, and so we hope to be able to resolve, um, you know, these negotiations expeditiously because we know that they're going to have an impact um, on Canadians, and we're going to continue to bargain um, in good faith, and that's extremely important. Um, when folks are taking strike action, um, they will only be able to process humanitarian and urgent passports. And there's a very specific um, set of requirements that are there that are laid out in the law. Um, you know, we're going to have to see how this goes. Uh, you know, if, if this is, uh, you know, if, if this job action wraps up quickly, it won't have a big impact. Um, however, if it goes on for quite some significant period of time, then, then it will. But What's at this point in time, I mean, we're right, you know, an hour into it. So let's hope that those negotiations continue to proceed. Um, and I know we'll be giving a can broader update. Can you just define what's a pa uh, an urgent passport? So it's, was it? it's humanitarian, <laughs> it's for humanitarian cases. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, well, so it's humanitarian cases um, and urgent. So that means, uh, you know, if there is an illness that requires medical treatment abroad, if there's been a death in the family uh, that someone needs to travel for, uh, if someone requires a passport in order to do their work, um, so it's very, it's a very specific set of circumstances. Mm -hmm. what, 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 after significant time, you could have an impact. What, what is that? What does that mean? What is a significant amount of time? Uh, well, look, we have a considerable capacity right now in the passport program uh, to be able to process passports. And, you know, we're going to be providing a broader update uh, later today on these issues, so I'll be happy to get more into it later then. Uh, but, it, it, you know, we can, we can handle, um, you know, as this moves forward, uh, you know, if it's a, a couple of days or maybe even a week, people will experience delays, um, but it doesn't mean that we're going to see a significant backlog. However, you know, if this goes on for a significant period of time, that will have an impact on regular passport applications that aren't urgent uh, or humanitarian. Combien de temps est-ce que ça peut durer? En français, combien de temps est-ce que ça peut durer? Well, as we, as we discussed last year during the passport challenges, uh, to become a passport officer is, is a is a significant um, training period. I mean, it can take you know 13 plus weeks to become a passport officer. So these are specialized folks. So we, we don't have other people who can do that. We will have people who are working to process those humanitarian uh, passports that are deemed essential services. But that's something that's been set out in the law. Come, Combien de temps ça peut durer sans qu'on retrouve encore un arriéré? Il me semble qu'on vient de se débarrasser d'un énorme arriéré dans les. Bon, ça, ça dépend beaucoup de la nature uh, de l'action du. du travail parce que uh, si c'est uh, chaque jour quelques heures et les autres heures les, les gens uh, font leur travail, ça va être, avoir moins d'impact, mais si c'est comme quelque chose qui uh, les gens qui sont les, uh, les gens qui sont dans le travail de passeport, s'ils font la grève tous les jours, pour des jours, ça va avoir des différents impacts. Alors, mais, on, jours, mais on, on, on ne sait pas exactement comment ça va dérouler, uh, mais, je, mais on, on va voir. Votre limite, elle est où? Parce que là, comme disait Marie, on vient de rattraper les retards. À partir de quel moment on retombe en retard? À partir de quel moment vous vous impatientez? Euh, C'est une bonne question, mais on ne sait pas exactement parce qu'on ne sait pas exactement comment la grève va dérouler. Alors, ça dépend si c'est quelques jours par jour ou c'est des jours Donc, entiers. Après trois jours, si on est collègue, après une semaine, c'est un problème. C'est diffi difficile à dire parce qu'on ne sait pas exactement comment uh, la grève va dérouler. Mais merci. Given how disruptive this is, it's back to what legislation is an option for the government. We're like at hour one right now. I mean, I think we want to continue to have productive conversations uh, with the union, which I know continue to go on. Um, and certainly, you know, as a government, we're committed to reaching an agreement. Thank you. Um, we were just talking to a couple of conservative MPs 
who expressed concern that immigration services will be impacted by this strike. Uh, can you reassure Canadians that that will not be the case? Uh, Any time that you have uh, staff who uh, are striking, services have the potential to be impacted. We're actually going to be uh, having an appearance at 12.30 today to discuss the potential impact of the public service strike on immigration uh, service levels. Uh, we do uh, know that the international network of staff that we have are part of a separate uh, bargaining unit and will continue to be able to provide services. Uh, we're looking now to uh, ensure we can maintain uh, certain essential services, uh, but obviously when there's a significant public service strike it has uh, an opportunity to uh, uh, or the potential to have a negative impact on service levels uh, my hope is that people stay at the table and work towards reaching agreement as soon as possible so we can continue to offer the services after we've made so, such significant progress in recent months uh, to catch up on uh, uh, on processing times and to have a positive uh, development in that and I hope the trend continues to move in that direction uh, but certainly the uh, the public service strike has the potential to have a serious impact on service levels the 1400 workers you've recently hired, how many of them are PSAC? Um, look, I, I would have to go and check of the number that we uh, we more recently hired. I expect a, a significant number. Uh, some of the staff who would have joined international offices uh, wouldn't have been impacted, but I don't have the uh, the breakdown just front of mind. But um, happy to follow up later today uh, to get that information to you. And does this add pressure for you to uh, have back to work legislation if, if the negotiations don't go anywhere? Uh, look, before I even uh, contemplate what next steps may take place and what negotiations going to happen as between the Treasury Board Secretariat and the, uh, the Public Service uh, Union, uh, I think it's important that we want to continue to encourage solutions to be uh, found at the table. Uh, we have put a reasonable offer, in my view, uh, forward, and we hope that uh, that uh, offer is put to members and that there's an opportunity for people to engage meaningfully uh, across the table. Uh, it's always best, in my view, uh, when you can continue to encourage conversations uh, to find solutions that are mutually acceptable. And and uh, our, our desire is to continue to negotiate a solution uh, in so far as that remains possible. Thank Thanks very much, Ravi. Any concerns and impacts uh, with health services in Canada due to the strike? I'll come back to, to that in a moment. Uh, Je vais commencer par dire que, en français quelque chose au sujet du travail des journalistes. Comme plusieurs le savent, je viens d'un milieu universitaire où l'information et les données, c'est clé pour faire avancer notre société. C'est aussi la clé pour soutenir notre démocratie et je connais dans ma circonscription à Québec des journalistes qui travaillent très fort depuis de nombreuses années pour appuyer notre économie, notre société et notre démocratie et ce que je ressens depuis quelques jours m'inquiète beaucoup parce qu'on fait peur aux journalistes lorsqu'on les intimide, lorsqu'on leur dit qu'ils sont des vendus, ce n'est pas quelque chose qui sert notre démocratie et qui sert notre société. Alors ça m'interpelle beaucoup comme ancien chercheur universitaire et ça m'interpelle aussi comme euh, politicien qui sert ma communauté à Québec. Maintenant, on health care services, well, obviously this is a, a matter of respect for the process that needs to take place. We value very much uh, and recognize the work of public health uh, and health care officials in, across Canada and including my own uh, uh, officials and public servants who work very hard every day to serve Canadians. Obviously, this is best done in the context in which we also respect the, the work that needs to be, take place between Treasury Board and the unions involved, and we are going to let that uh, work evolve. Sur le troisième lien, Monsieur Duclos, est-ce qu'un projet entièrement de, de transport collectif se qualifierait pour davantage de financement? Il semble que c'était ça le, le point de litige là, entre Ottawa et Québec. Est-ce que ça change la donne? Mais, euh, trois choses là-dessus. La première, c'est qu'évidemment, on attend euh, l'annonce qui apparemment aurait lieu demain. Là, les gens l'attendent depuis un certain temps. Deuxièmement, j'ai toujours répété ce que les gens de ma circonscription euh, m'ont dit au cours des dernières années, c'est qu'ils qu régnaient euh, et qu'ils qu avaient peur qu'une autoroute euh, routière sorte en plein milieu de ma circonscription dans des quartiers centraux très fragiles. Et troisièmement, bien, que le gouvernement canadien a toujours appuyé l'importance d'investir dans le transport en commun, à Québec en particulier. Québec est la ville, parmi toutes les villes de taille comparable, où on n'a toujours pas de transport structurant en matière de transport collectif, donc on a bien hâte de, de oui, mais on sait là, que ce sera uniquement du transport collectif. Donc, est-ce que ça va, change On va attendre de voir l'annonce de demain et les détails qui vont avec l'annonce. Comme tout le monde à Québec, on, a, on attend cette annonce depuis un certain temps. On se réjouit que le gouvernement du Québec soit capable de faire demain. Mais vous voyez ça quand même comme une bonne nouvelle. 
pas une bonne nouvelle que les gens puissent en savoir davantage. Euh, pour l'instant, tout ce qu'on sait, c'est que… On sacrifie le transport automobile pour seulement concentrer le projet sur… Ça a été exact. confirmé là, par le gouvernement. L'annonce officielle est le même, mais ça a été confirmé. Voyez-vous ça comme une bonne nouvelle? C'est que je regarde votre, votre sourire, Raymond, puis je, je, je vois aussi le sourire des gens de la circonscription qui vont être contents d'avoir plus d'informations demain. Il faut attendre encore une journée pour en avoir euh, suffisamment. Mais pourquoi vous ne voulez pas de financement? Vous venez d'entendre des financements avec le fédéral? Bien, parce qu'on attend que le gouvernement du Québec puisse avoir la chance. Mme Guilbeault a ce matin, on le sait que c'est ah, ça. Mme Guilbeault a des précisions ce matin, je ne l'ai pas pu les voir, mais je sais que demain, il va y avoir une annonce à laquelle je, 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 je sais que plusieurs personnes vont porter beaucoup attention, et moi aussi, et on pourra réagir. C'est ce que vous souhaitez, vous, le transport en commun, un focus sur le transport en commun plutôt que l'automobile? Deux choses. La première, c'est qu'on a toujours insisté, on a toujours appuyé sur l'importance du transport collectif dans la région de Québec, parce que la région de Québec, comme je le disais, et la région, parmi toutes les régions comparables du pays, on n'a pas encore de transport structurant où les options de transport sont encore trop limitées. Et la deuxième chose, c'est que moi, je suis député de la circonscription de Québec, responsable des quartiers centraux de la capitale nationale. Ce sont des endroits, des milieux euh, fragiles où les gens souffrent déjà de pollution de l'air, de congestion et de pollution, vivent dans des conditions euh, sociales, économiques et sanitaires difficiles. Et les gens me disent depuis plusieurs mois qu'une autoroute qui sortirait et qui éventrait ma circonscription ne serait pas une bonne chose. Avant d'aller plus loin, je dois attendre évidemment l'annonce officielle de, de Mme Guilbeault demain, puis euh, je la remercie à l'avance de nous donner des précisions sur ce projet. Okay, merci. I'm going to be monitoring really closely. I've had a number of chiefs already reach out just with uh, anxiety about direct uh, delivery. The department has an operational plan, though, to continue to provide services, and frontline services won't be affected. Nonetheless, I'll be watching and listening extremely carefully. Some of those services that are delivered are, are, are life uh, 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 life saving and also really necessary for the functioning. Well, how, how long can it last, though, without services being affected? Oh, I can't speculate about that. <laughs> I can tell you that we have a contingency plan that the deputy minister and her team have worked out for a number of weeks, and um, we have a, a plan to continue to deliver services in person. What do you Should think we have of the idea of, uh, of granting five uh, days off for people who have uh, First Nations activities, traditional activities? That's one of the requests. Well, listen, I'm not going to speak to the, the, the bargaining that's happening at the table. I think it's really encouraging that the parties still remain at the table, and I uh, hope that those, uh, those negotiations continue and that both parties continue to work towards getting an, an, a, a collective agreement in place so that we can continue the service to Canadians. Should we consider Goodbye. back to work legislation? À propos de la grève, quel, quel train vous avez, ça a un effet, notamment sur les services aux autochtones, et à quel point le gouvernement va construire des autochtones? Bien, je sais qu'il va toujours avoir des services essentiels. Euh, ça fait que pour les autochtones et d'autres mondes, euh, dans des euh, parties du pays remote et euh, isolées, il va toujours avoir des services essentiels. Ça fait que euh, je me fie sur ça, puis... Euh, je peux les assurer qu'on va être là pour des services. On est en, situation, on est en zone d'inondation, on est en, en saison d'inondation, il y a des choses qui vont être relocalisées, il y a du logement qui doit être trouvé. Ces services-là, à quel point ils vont être ralentis durant la grève? Comme j'ai dit, les services essentiels vont être là. C'est absolument garanti. Puis euh, on, on travaille fort pour essayer de résoudre tous les, les enjeux. Puis je crois que euh, les, euh, tout le monde devrait revenir à la table pour les négociations sont mieux faites à la table. Et vous avez des euh, Écoute, j'ai confiance dans le processus, puis si le monde euh, retourne à la table, euh, on va continuer à négocier, on veut, on apprécie le travail que les, les, euh, 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 les servants publics font, on apprécie ça, puis on veut une entente qui est juste. Qu'est-ce que vous pensez Merci. de cette idée de demander les congés pour les personnes qui se disent sans congés pour les activités traditionnelles? Je crois que ces enjeux sont mieux résolus à la table. Merci. Could we talk to you about your concerns regarding the strike and how it affects your business in your department? As my colleague Minister Fortier has said and as Treasury Board has issued a statement, um, we obviously have a tremendous amount of respect for the work that our public servants do every single day in providing services to Canadians. Um, the government, uh, through the Treasury Board, has tabled a, an offer. Um, obviously, respect um, uh, those uh, individuals who are out there expressing uh, their, their concerns about um, that negotiation. But 
you know, our, our sincere hope is, is that the parties will stay at the table and we'll find a solution soon. Can I ask you a quick question about the Syrian detainees that Canada seems to have lost track of? Um, do you have any update? How is it possible that we lost track of Canadians in, in Syria that we were supposed to be looking at? Well, as I have said many times, I can't comment on operations, um, and obviously uh, we'll, uh, we'll continue to, uh, to um, do what is necessary um, when it comes to um, um, issues around, uh, around terrorism and around um, uh, Canadians abroad, but, but I won't comment on operations. On the arrest of the two Chinese men in New York, and one of them was uh, linked to well, I want to underline that the RCMP has taken concrete and decisive action when it comes to the so-called police stations that were put in place by China, uh, having shut down a number of them, and I think it shows an ongoing vigilance by frontline law enforcement uh, to take the steps that are necessary to address and mitigate the risks around foreign interference. I'd also point out in Budget 2023 uh, that we've allocated tens of millions of dollars for the RCMP and other law enforcement agencies to support Canadians who may be targeted by foreign interference, and that's why I hope the Conservatives and other opposition parties will support the budget. Écoute, euh, nous, reste, nous restons euh, toujours vigilants et avec les investissements que le gouvernement a déjà mis en place pour renforcer nos agences euh, d'intelligence, de renseignement et pour renforcer euh, les ressources des de, services policiers, je suis confiant que nous, euh, nous, a, nous, nous avons en place euh, les ressources qui sont nécessaires pour adresser les menaces euh, de les gérances étrangères. Merci beaucoup. Two-thirds of uh, uh, department employees are considered essential workers, um, but that doesn't mean that the other third, if they are uh, not at work, will not have disruptions. So we, our department has prepared Plan B. Uh, we have managers preparing to put some work, additional work, and, and working with other stakeholders who might be impacted. So I'll be brief today on what the impact that we're seeing based on uh, work stoppage. Do these managers have the training to be doing this work? We, they've been preparing for this uh, alternative or potential for the last uh, few weeks. So uh, I'll hear today about how things are going. And, and where would they be working? What are those jobs they would be taking up? Well, it, it, look, again, all things that are safety um, related are considered essential. So those jobs will not have disruptions. There will be some administrative stuff, like call centers uh, that Transport Canada has uh, will be impacted. But also, as I said, we're preparing for Plan B. Thank you. Minister, any impact to trade as a result of the uh, federal strike underway? We're monitoring the situation uh, closely. We hope to uh, continue to work with public servants to uh, get a deal. But in the meantime, uh, we're taking a close look uh, at it uh, to ensure a minimal impact. Essential services will continue. But how might imports and exports be affected? The union says it's going to delay things uh, in the flow of goods across the We're going to keep looking uh, and uh, we're going to keep monitoring the situation. And, uh, and we continue to stay in touch with uh, Canadian businesses, importers and exporters on this. So we'll keep working on it. Thanks.